Hello everyone. Welcome to Mayans Business School. Today in this lesson we will be starting Financial Strategy F3 paper of CIMA CIMA. As you know this is in the strategic level, final level of CIMA. You have three subjects F3, E3, E3 and then you will have to do a case study. So this subject is financial strategy. In this session, I will be just giving you a brief about what this subject is about, how the exam is going to be, how you can pass the exam. A brief about this subject will be given to you in this lesson. So in summary, this is how we can define this subject. Create financial strategy, evaluate and manage financial risk and assess organizational value. So there are three sections in this subject. Did you notice that? Create financial strategy. How financial strategy can be formed for a business. Evaluate and manage financial risk. What are the types of financial risk we have? Identify them, evaluate them and come up with right management plan. How we are going to manage each financial uh, risk. And finally, the organizational value, how to value businesses. Because valuation of businesses will be required when you want to take over another company, when you want to, you want to merge with another company. Valuation is one of the fundamentals. So all those three areas will be discussed in this lesson. Content weighting. The syllabus of financial strategy is divided into four blocks of syllabus. First one is financial policy decisions, 15%. Later I will show you, you know, what comes under each of them. Sources of long-term funds, 25% of syllabus. Financial risks, 20% and the biggest chunk is business valuations, 40%. Let's see one by one, each of these blocks of syllabus, what is covered, what is included in each of them. Let's have a look at that now. Financial policy decisions, 15% of syllabus. Make financial policy decisions that align to the organizational strategic objectives. Every organization will have some long-term strategic plans, strategic objectives. Usually when you go through their mission statement, you will be able to understand, okay, what this focus, what their strategic focus is. So according to that strategic focus, to support that strategic plan, we need to come up with the right financial policy, financial plan. Because financial plan cannot be prepared independently. You need to remember every organization have a strategic plan, strategic objective, meaning like 10 years later, 5 years later, where you want to see this company, how you want to compete with others, how you want to position the company in the market, how you are going to create value to your shareholders. So that's strategic plan. To support the strategic plan, financial policy should be prepared. According to the strategic plan, financial policy should be prepared. There are three lessons in your syllabus under this block of syllabus. First one is understanding strategic financial objectives. Second one, non-financial objectives. Third one, development of financial strategy. Right? Not much of calculations into this. This 15% is more of a uh, theory, understanding, logical discussion kind of uh, lesson or block of syllabus it will be. Second block is sources of long-term funds. Analyze and evaluate the sources of long-term finances to meet the organization's financing requirements. Say you want to do a large investment. You are planning to take over another company. So in such instances you need finance. Sometimes you may have internally generated finance. Sometimes you might not have. You need to seek external source of funds. 
to bring in and go ahead with your investment. So that options you have will be discussed here. There are four lessons in this block. Financing, equity finance. All about equity finance, advantages, disadvantages, different options available, some calculations are there, all that. And then debt finance, different options of debt finance, advantages, disadvantages, and calculations. Third one is capital structure. What is going to be the proportion of equity and debt you are going to maintain? There are certain concepts, theories, and then practical issues. We will discuss all of them, some calculation involved. Finally, dividend policy. Dividend policy is out of your earnings. How much you should pay as dividend, how much you should retain, what are the concepts, what are the considerations you have to uh, do before making your dividend plan. That's dividend policy. All this together, 25% of your syllabus is going to be. Financial risks, 20%. Identify assess and manage financial risks associated with cash flows and capital projects there are several types of financial risks starting with exchange rate risk because if your activity is involved in foreign currencies then there will be foreign currency rate fluctuations which is a risk for you how we are going to face that interest rate risk if you are borrowing if you are investing yes you are exposed to interest rate fluctuations so how we handle that, what are the techniques we have, for example, forward contracts, futures, options, um, swaps, likewise there are different say instruments or techniques that you can use to manage or hedge your risk, we will be discussing that. Apart from exchange rate risk and interest rate risk, there are many other types of risk as well, we will be briefly look at, looking at them but not much in detail, mainly these two, exchange rate risk and interest rate risk will be discussed in detail. Look at the three lessons we have here, financial risk, currency risk management and interest rate risk management. Finally, the biggest portion of your syllabus is business valuation, 40% of syllabus it is. Develop and apply business valuation techniques to measure the tangible and intangible value of organizations. That's the point. You know, when you are valuing the business, it's not only about tangible assets. It's not only about the assets you have in your balance sheet. There will be assets which are intangible and are not reflected in the balance sheet. For example, intellectual capacity, the goodwill, reputation of the company, future projects that are expected. All these are intangibles which will not be there in the balance sheet. So how we are going to factor that? There are different different valuation methods. We have to study that. The three lessons that come under here, mergers and acquisitions, business valuations, pricing issues. Pricing issues means when you are trying to take over a company, how that company is going to be priced. How we come up with a price that is agreeable to both the acquirer and the target company, right? post transaction issues see you take over a company then two different companies now they come together they have to work on the same objective but it's not as easy as we say why previously they were two different companies they might have had different strategic focus they might have had different way of functioning so when you bring them together how we are going to do this integration how the integration can be done smoothly, right? How the people can be trained, how people can be counseled, all that we'll be discussing here. So overall, that is all the syllabus of financial strategy paper F3, right? So before we start, you should have an overall idea of what we are going to study all together in this subject. Now let's see how your exam, how your questions are going to be. We call it objective test questions, right? Each subject F3, E3, B3, you have to do separate OTQ, objective test questions exam. Once you clear those three exams, then you have to do the strategic level case study. 
where you know the knowledge from all three subjects will be tested on a case study uh, format when we see objective test questions there are different types of questions that you can get which i have listed here multiple choices that is the conventional mcq where you get four options you need to choose one of them multiple choice with more than one answer that means sometimes there might be four or five options they will give and they might say there are two statements that are right select the two or select all the statements that are right questions like that so not only one answer there will be multiple answers single numeric entry you do some calculation and enter the answer for example calculate weighted average cost of capital you calculate that enter the figure multiple entry there might be you know a couple of numbers to enter you wouldn't have much of you know typing there you don't have to type paragraphs or sentences you know mostly numbers you'll have to enter true or false questions that means they'll give a statement and they'll ask you to mark true or false or they'll give you statements and there'll be a column true and false you have to tick them which ones are true which ones are false matching pairs of text like in the small ages you would have done the school ages some text or some terms are there on one side on the other side the definitions or descriptions are there connecting them yeah that's matching pairs of text labeling graphs sometimes graphs line graphs might be given we may have to label x y axis right so these are the majority of types of questions that you're going to get right this is not a exhaustive list there can be more different types as well but this gives you an idea what types of questions you'll be getting in the exam so in the exam you get 60 such otqs why we say compulsory is you don't have options you have to answer all 60 questions you can't choose you can choose but if you opt out for questions you don't get marks for them all 60 questions you do only then you can target the full marks 90 minutes is the time allocation usually before the exam they will give you a 15 minutes demo a sample exam like thing you know you can go through the demo exclusive of that 15 minutes to answer these 60 questions you get 90 minutes all questions are equally weighted right so sometimes for you it might sound like okay this question is easy that question is difficult but all carry equal marks equally weighted all elements of question must be marked correctly to obtain the marks that means if a question asks you to enter two numbers both numbers must be correct to get the marks of the question if you enter one number correctly other number wrong still you don't get any marks which means there is no part mark for a question either you can get full marks or no marks scoring we have an interesting scoring you now total marks is 150 and they say scale score why they say scale score understand the meaning of this scale score in cima see the questions that you get are from a question bank when you go and enter the details of us and you start the exam there is a question bank from the question bank 60 questions are going to be pulled out and it comes into your exam on the same day at the same time another student next to you in, the, in another computer is doing the same exam he might not get the same 60 questions he may get completely different questions so when when two students or two candidates appear for the exam sometimes one exam might be slightly difficult than the other exam they have done standardization as much as possible almost all questions are of equal weightage similar questions but still some exam can be a little easier some exams can be a little tougher little means a little bit you know not very difficult or easy so sima decided okay we have to adjust for this compared to the average difficulty level of an exam if a student gets a more difficult exam he will be given a little bit of scale up let's say out of 150 you got 110 marks the row marks so okay, let's work like this 60 questions each 2.5 marks is 150 marks right let's say you got 50 questions right 50 questions the row marks will be 125 15 to 
Later they will check your exam. If the difficulty level is more than the average difficulty level, might be one mark or two mark will be given additionally for you. It can become 126 or 127. Similarly, if your if your exam was a little bit easier than the average difficulty level of the exam, your marks might be reduced by one or two. So 125 is the raw marks. You might get 124 or 123. Right. So that's that. That's what they mean by scaled score and zero to 150. If you get 100 or more than 100, it is considered to be pass. So, in terms of row marks, 100 out of 150 means two third out of 60, you will get 40 questions. But because of scaling, I would say sometimes even if you get 40 questions right, it might not be enough for pass. So, at least you know 41, 42 questions must be correct to ensure that you pass the exam. But my point is, don't target the border, don't target the threshold, target for good marks. Because this is a very enjoyable subject. They have a lot of knowledge which will be very practical once you start working or if you are already working in the finance team of your company. You will know how meaningful, how practical every lesson you are going to study here. So ideally you should have 100% knowledge which will be really beneficial when you start working in the finance team of your company. Right. So passing the exam is one but applying all this knowledge in your company, in your team is more important because that's going to be your career for a much longer time right so don't target the threshold target full marks so this is about the results you will be given a provisional pass or fail decision when you access or log into CMA, my CMA account through dashboard that means immediately after the exam they will give you a provisional result based on the row marks you get a provisional results but if I take two working days or 48 hours per CIMA to evaluate your questions that you have got and to decide whether it is more difficult or less difficult, whether marks should be added or whether marks should be subtracted, to decide that they may take 48 hours. So your confirmed results plus your scale score and your performance against the syllabus content area will be published to your MySima account after 48 hours of the exam. 48 hours. So that is what is the confirmed results. Provisional exam, let's say more than 90% of times what students get gets confirmed later, but still it's not 100% sure. Yes. And this is the pass rate. If 100 students sit for the exam, 55 pass, 45 do not pass. This data has been collected from 1st of November 2020 to 30th of November 2021. So the next Next data has not come yet, 30th November 2022, they will collect all the data and afterwards they will be updating, SEMA will be updating it in the website. So if you ask me 55 percentage, is it good, is it easy, okay, let me give you some indication, E3, F3, P3, E3 has 72 percentage pass rate, E3, F3 has 55 percentage pass rate, F, uh, P3 has 52 percentage pass rate, right. And almost half of the people not passing the exam, it, it indicates the exam is not very easy. So how do you pass? First problem, like why a lot of students do not pass, they try these options of self-study, maybe because they don't have time, working, family commitment, so you don't want to spend time on learning uh, with the trainer and all. You go with self-learning with some, you know, videos here and there, materials and all. Mind you, Papers like this, technical papers, learning from a right trainer is important because you need to get the right knowledge. If you don't have right knowledge, even if you practice 1000 questions, you are not going to pass the exam or chances are less because knowledge, right knowledge has to be required. So valuation techniques means, okay, why we are doing this, right? Okay, we have a, uh, say, uh, pricing of shares. We have one, one method called uh, P node equals D node into 1 plus E over K E or K E minus D. So how this equation comes? You can, one option you can just memorize and go. The other option is, okay, price of a share. Why an investor is buying a share today? Because he is expecting long term benefits or future benefits of the share. What are the future benefits of the share? Getting the dividends. Lifelong you are going to get the dividends. 
So present value of all those dividends must be the value of that share today. How do we discount it? Okay, we discount it like this. That's how this formula comes. Knowledge. How and why each, each equation comes, how to use it. No. If you learn with that right knowledge, even if the question is twisted, you get different types of questions, you can comfortably handle that. You just memorize because it is in the book. You just memorize and go. It's going to be easy if you get the same format of questions. If you get questions like the ones you have practiced, it's easy. But unfortunately, strategic level, CIMA doesn't work like that. They test the knowledge. They really test like whether you understood the concepts. Yes. So learn the knowledge, get the knowledge first. Then practice questions. With knowledge, practice sufficient number of questions and then go to the exam. It will be easy for you. Right. So that's all from me regarding the introduction of this subject. I believe it gives you a brief, a quick brief of what this subject is going to be, how to study this and all. So in the next lesson, I'll be straight away starting the syllabus. I may not be teaching you uh, in the same order that you find in the books of publishers. For example, uh, Kaplan is there, BBB is there, many other publishers are there. But I have my own way of teaching. I have my own order of teaching lessons. So if you are following my lectures, Make sure you follow in the right order that I suggest. All right. So I wish you all the very best to you all. Study well, pass well and succeed in your career. Thank you.